we come to John chapter 14, verse 2. In my father's house are many, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you. You say, Stalin, you forgot a word there. I know. That's what the lesson is about today. My King James Bible says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I left a church on this. I left Harbor Baptist Church in Norman Beach, Florida, because the pastor of that church got up and read what we just read, and forgetting what actually he read, it wasn't mansions, though it was a King James church. In my father's house are many, there are places. This is a modern Bible, rooms, <clears throat> a room to spare, abodes. Places to stay. Homes. And one of those things, maybe another was, I, I heard him read out of the pulpit. And I said, that's it. And there have been other places in the Bible that, you know, it was questioned. But right there, well, that was, you know what? That's it. We're gone. And it's funny how nobody else, as far as I know, follows suit. When a person gets up to believe the King James Bible and then corrects the King James Bible with a modern Bible, but that's not our thing tonight. And the fact is, mansion or mansions, this is the only place in the Bible it occurs. <clears throat> and it's Jesus talking to his disciples. And it says many mansions. It doesn't say many rooms, many abodes. And there's not much, though I've heard many things to be spoken about this mansion. And I like to know what these modern Bible churches and these pretenders of the King James Bible, when they open up their hymnal, and there are some hymns that say mansion. I warn those hymns are ever sung. I've got a mansion over the hilltop. I guess in a modern Bible you would not, you cannot sing that hymn, unless maybe that hymn has been changed. But whatever, what little information we're given by Jesus Christ, when we read about in, in Revelation, because New Jerusalem <clears throat> is the future abode, and we go to heaven. <clears throat> But we go to a place that's better than heaven. We go to New Jerusalem. And New Jerusalem, Revelation 21, 1, And I saw the new heaven, new earth, from the first heaven and from the first earth were passed away. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I'll let you read on your own, but there's a description in the rest of chapter 21. And that description of uh, New Jerusalem, I don't see any mansions. I mean, let's look, let's see. We'll break it down. Having the glory of God, light as a stone brush precious, it's great and high, 12 greats, 12 angels, with the names of the tribes of the children of Israel, gates, three gates on each side, northwest, east, and south. The and with those are the names of 12 apostles and lamb. Uh, and it was measured, the four score length is the large of the breadth, and measured the city of three. 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it were equal. We measure the wall. And the building of the wall is jasper. It goes through the, the stones. The road, the street is gold, pure gold. The gates are a pearl. There's a temple. There's no need of the sun. Nations shall come in now. 
The gates shall not be shut. There will be no sin, no iniquity to enter therein. There's a pure river. There's the throne of God. I don't see any dwelling place. But Jesus said, I go prepare a, a, a mansion. And when you read about the splendor of New Jerusalem, all these magnificent stones and gems, and a street of gold, pure as gold, which means that street is, I have been told <clears throat> by people who work with, with ores and gems, pure gold is actually clear when you remove all the impurity. And again, you can't have the streets, plural, of gold. It's the street of gold. you got to get these things right. And with the splendor of what New Jerusalem I am to read about, with in eternity, <clears throat> and I'll tell you, going back to John chapter 14, I'll tell you what, what spoke my mind. The moment that I heard that change, and listen, I heard John 14 many times to earn my degree as a Dr. Sally William Hayward. I had to go to the Gospel of John. And then John 14, I mentioned, were in many of my classes. And I've been in countless churches, and, you know, one of the messages is that mansion. So I'm sitting in this church, and and in my father's house are many. I, I forget what he what his Bible said, what he said. If we're not so, that moment that mansion has been, was changed to something else. You lessen God's ability. You changed. The glory and honor where, uh, where God is going to have Jesus Christ pray. I mean, rooms to spare. <clears throat> places to stay. Listen, we're going to glory. We're not going to a hotel. We're not going to a place where we have a landlord. There will be no rent. And we're not going to no shanty. We're not, we're not going to a building that is going to break down. We're going to have plumbers in heaven, I guarantee, but we're not going to need their services. There'll be carpenters in heaven, but they won't be carpenting. There'll be electricians that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be no broken light switches, broken lamps or wiring that needs to be redone in the mansion. We won't need flood insurance. We won't need fire insurance. And then the spectacular, if Jesus said, I go prepare a place for you, can you imagine what kind of place Jesus would prepare? A shabby place for us? I don't think so. I, I don't think something that Jesus would be anything better than the best. He's God. And we do have in Revelation 21 too, I saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Jesus said, I go prepare a place for you. That place is New Jerusalem. And in verse 21, 3 in Revelation, I heard a great voice out of heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And we will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. When we're looking at John 14, 2, we're also looking at Revelation 21, 2 and 21, 3. And when you lessen the mansion with places, rooms, rooms to spare, abodes, places to stay, <clears throat> homes, you have lessened, you have weakened. The place called New Jerusalem, with all 
the splendor of the gems and the stones and the precious stone and the street of gold and those great pearls and the names of the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel and the names of 12 apostles of the Lamb. That it came out, what's it say? I saw John, the Holy Spirit, New Jerusalem, coming down from God. Now, Jesus said, in my house are many mansions. So I'm not going to say the mansion is New Jerusalem because he said many mansions. There's one New Jerusalem. And we're really not giving much detail about the mansions. But there's enough detail that the modern Bibles have corrected and it needs to be addressed. Now watch this, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But as it's written, I have not seen an ear heard Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared. There's that prepare again. He says, I go prepare a place for you. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now, the splendor of what Jesus has prepared for and Mansion. A mansion. Man, listen, listen. I grew up a little boy. Uh, there, there are mansions in New London, Connecticut, along the, the, the river, the, the Thames River and the, and the Sound, Long Island Sound. And they were sp sp splendor, great place. Wow, look at that beautiful building. Well, there are great places in, in New London, Connecticut, too, as a boy. I've been to many places. And I can tell you some places I've been. Now, listen, I'm not weak in New, New Jersey. But let's look at a little boy who's seen a mansion. And you talk about New London, Connecticut. I mean, there is some fabulous money in New London, Connecticut. And when you move to the West, you move to Waterford, Connecticut. That means there, there's a lot of money. And then you've got people like O'Neill. And you got famous names with famous people and famous actors and actresses. There are some beautiful homes in history. So a little boy who has seen many mansions where he grew up, though not going inside any of them, and I have been inside some mansions. So when Jesus said, I prepare a mansion for you, wow, glory to God. That's fabulous. And when I pick up a modern Bible, let's look what a modern Bible to a little boy growing up in New London, Connecticut. I, I places. I've been many places. And places, some places are not like mansions. I've been to places where there've been dead fish, lobsters. I have been in places, little boy growing up. I have been places where I've talked to pimps. And prostitutes. When I grew up as a little boy, we had we, this, one of the main streets was called Bank Street. And when you went out after a certain hour of the day, there were the prostitutes. And they were listen. A little boy grew. I, I was around those places. I was around the places of drug dealers. <laughs> Bad. Well, I grew up in those things. I was I, I was in a place one time. I had a job. Places. We're looking at places. It was a pizza place, and I was a little boy, and I was given money to go out, pass out flyers. Well, we were in the pizza place, you know, getting what street we were going to go in at, and the cops came in. And the police officer pulled me inside. He goes, what are you doing here? He was thinking, man, I was getting the pizza. I said, you guys hired me to, to hand out flyers. He's, the cop says, do me a favor, son. I said, What's that, sir? You know, I treat a police officer with respect. Step outside. And just, just go about your business. We don't come back here no more, please. And you don't ask questions. Huh? Yes, officer. I mean, am I? He goes, "You're done here." And I stepped outside. You know what happened? It was a drug deal. They had more than oregano in the back room. Those are places. And then there's there's the thing that there are many rooms. Some of the modern Bibles. I've been in rooms. I've been in countless rooms. 
I've been in many bathrooms. And I've been in some stinky, raunchy, gross bathrooms. And I've been in some nice rooms. I've been in some rooms, you walk in, kick your feet up, and I've been in some rooms, take off your shoes. Don't touch that. I have been in rooms where you should not have been in that room. I have been in hotel rooms. I won't go any further. I've been in motel rooms. I have been in bar rooms. Well, I mean, what kind of rooms? I mean, if you're talking about the splendor of New Jerusalem, I prepared many rooms. Big deal. I got many rooms here. I got one, two, three, four, five. I got five rooms here. I've been in, in efficiency where there's two, two or three rooms. A main living, a bathroom, and a kitchen. Again, I've been in mansions where there have been many rooms. I, I was in one, one I, I asked if I use, may use the facility, and they're like, which one do you want to use? Anyone, I can use one, you know. I have been in grand places with grand rooms. I'm thinking about a, a grand room that, uh, um, it was a hotel, I can't think of the name, now by, down by Pequot Avenue. I used to deliver papers every morning to this place. It was an inn that closed up. So I'll give you many rooms. Here's a mansion. Here is a inn that, that's been turned into a, a, a hotel motel. I can't think of the name of it. All right, rooms. Well, big deal. I delivered newspapers to this place six days a week. I use their bathroom every single time. It was one of those places where I work, where I stop off, and I would use the bathroom. That's rooms. And then there's rooms to spare. Rooms to spare. Hi, God, I'm finally home. Oh. I don't know if I have room for you. Michael? Do we have room? We got a room for him? There wasn't even room at the end for Jesus when he was born. Room to spare sounds like, oh, I wasn't prepared for you. And Jesus says, I go prepare a place for you. And when we get to glory, it's not like, oh, shoot, you're here. <laughs> An abode. Man. Places to stay. Sounds like I'm going to be moving around. <laughs> sounds like that there's a heavenly moving van moving trailer rental place. No, when I get the glory and wherever God has me to stay and live, I'm going to live at that place. I ain't moving around no more. Again, there may be movers in heaven saved. I ain't, they're not going to bust their backs anymore moving furniture. Places to stay. How? Listen, again, I have, I have gone over to families' homes and been overnight and, okay, the living room over there with a cop. That's not what God's giving me. When he tells us the splendor of a mansion and I go prepare a place for you and what I read to you in, in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and Revelation 21, 2, it ain't just a place to stay. It ain't just a room. And he says, homes. It's better than a home. So to me, when that preacher got up and quoted and changed, and he and he, he didn't even say mansion. He just, in my father's house are many, and then whatever the ones I just gave you. I felt cheated. I felt my holy, righteous father who has all the riches in the world. And he does. He could speak to creation with his holy mouth and, the, and Jesus Christ. And when it comes to the dwelling place that I'm going to go by the words of Jesus. You have cheapened. What Jesus has to offer. And then, if you got a red letter Bible, 
In my father's house are many mansions. That's a red letter. And if you don't, that's the words of Jesus Christ himself. What gives you the right? How dare you to change what Jesus said? What gives these modern Bible perverts, and I call them, per I liken modern Bible perversions as worse as sex perversions. A, pipe, a, a person, a committee that sits down and changes the word of God, you're just like a, 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 a sodomite. You're just like a, a, a child predator. You, we ought to put your name like they put their name on sexual predators. This person changes the word of God. That when they try to go into any church, we'd look up their name, we do a check on Bible pervert. I think we need a name like, like sexual perversion. How dare you? How dare you change what Jesus said? What gives you that right? 